Okay, I know it's all friends here tonight, all fans uh, and uh, relations, and we just want Mickey, we just want to enjoy the the absolute class of the enduring brilliance, he hates this, of Mickey McConnell. <laughs> because the little, no, the little no, fucker no. is the best songwriter in the country. And, uh, and he, he really is. And there's a couple of American people just came in tonight. I talked, they were going to go to bed because the Americans get tired sometimes um, from driving around the roads. And we have people from as far away as Castle Gregory and Inge, Cork. Uh, killed there, and there's a couple of lads there came all the way from Galway and Mayo. And Donegal. And Donegal. And, uh, and uh, we have Neil Braston who travelled all the way from right next door to Mickey. <laughs> but, uh, Mickey, Mickey McCall, uh, uh, folks, by the way, it's the, we turn off the phones and, um, and uh, you know, you can kind of sneak up for a drink nice and quietly, but no talking during the songs. And we'll have a break at half time. So, this is something I've been looking forward to anyway for. Months. It's hard enough to get him to do it because he's the most modest man who's ever put into the world. But let's hear it from Mickey McConnell. Yeah. It all goes downhill from here on in. <laughs> Thanks, Billy, and thanks to everyone who came along tonight. As I say, I have suffered from my art, and now it's your turn. <laughs> so, I think we'll start off with a song for absent friends. I always do it here. <clears throat> I had to re rewrite this song. I wrote it originally for John B. after he died. But then when Mary died, I knew she'd never forgive me if I didn't include her in the song. So, uh, this is for John and Mary. There is nowhere quite so lonely as a silent, darkened stage. When the footlights have all dimmed and died And the props are put away But our tongue felt just as lonely As when we turned into June When God finally rang the curtain down And called our play right home Then when autumn skies were dark with rain his Mary slipped away to rejoin him and to guide him in his poetry, songs and plays from that magical, much better place the pair of them looked down and forever lived together in the heartbeat of our time. Search for them in Market Street, on the lane or in the square, or late afternoons in Church Street. You'll surely find them there, or where the laughing, sparkling, silvery feel sweeps westward to the sea. There you'll follow in the footprints of Mary and John B. Always seemed to hear the tune that others seldom heard as he walked through his beloved streets or in the woods of Girton Art. He would pause and talk to children, knowing each and every name of their seed and generation and the place from where they came. Three men he wrote about, the corner boys and babes, slipped from reality to printed word, and then 
to actors on the stage And their language oh, that he captured All the things they had to say Proved the guiding hand of Mary Had coached him in their ways So search for them in Market Street On the lane or in the school Scully's corner, she'll surely find them there, or where the laughing, sparkling, silvery feel sweeps westward to the sea. There you'll follow in the footprints of Mary and John. And the writers came to say their last goodbye, as did the actors and the critics, the mighty and the high, as they mingled all with the town folk on his last sad journey home. Then each and every one knew well we were parting with our own. But I take comfort from the shadows For shadows mean the sun still shines To melt the clouds above us And the ones that fog our minds And each time the pen confronts the sword For the likes of you and me There you'll find the gentle shadow And the presence of God Search for them in Market Street, on the lane, or in the square, or where there's laughter, love, and music. You'll surely find them there, or where the laughing, sparkling, silvery feel sweeps westward to the sea. There you'll follow in the footprints of Mary and John. So there is nowhere quite so lonely as a silent, darkened stage when the footlights have all been the night and the props are put away. But our town felt just as lonely as when we turned to June when God finally rang the curtain down and called our poor white. Um, I'll start sort of at the beginning. This is a, a little love song I wrote way back in the 60s. Um, and I need strong drink before I attack. Song called Supermarket Wine. Super. You'd insist we'd share the driving when we left the city lights. In a club dog, Morris Minor, heading west on Friday nights. And the heater wasn't working, and we never had a spare. 
But we call that old car flattery For it got us everywhere And when we'd stop to pitch the tent It always seemed to rain And it's then that I discovered You'd forgot the pegs again And I couldn't be at the campfire lit No matter what I tried Don't you remember? We had roadside stops for bread and cheese And supermarket wine When the world was ours I was yours, and I thought you were mine. Do you remember Galway races and the man in Harless Toad, who, because he knew your father, said he'd do us a good deed? And the horse he put our money on, I swear it's running still. And we were staying in a boarding house, and I couldn't pay the bill. But you laughed when I went overboard, you told me not to swear, saying the town's full of Americans. Let's go busking in Air Square And the Blarney Stone and the Leprechauns Are sure to see us through Don't you remember? We drowned Danny Boy in Galway Bay At least 87 times And the world was ours I was yours, I thought you were mine. You called me from the airport just before you caught your plane, and you told me you were leaving, but that I was not to blame. And you hoped that I would understand And we'd always be good friends But I knew from what you said That we would never meet again And I must confess It hurt like hell And that I miss you yet For you were not the sort of girl It's easy Forget. And sometimes some half-forgotten fragment of you trips my mind And I remember All the roadside stops were bread and cheese And supermarket wine When the world was ours and I was yours you were mine. All the roadside stops for bread and cheese and supermarket wine. When the world was ours and I was yours, I thought you were Thank you. You shake. They always say one of the, one of the best bit of advice that I ever got, and which I never actually put into effect, was that you should never have your friends and family at any gig you're playing because they're so sick of listening to you. They sit in the corner and they do nothing except make noise. <laughs> <laughs> Consider yourselves rebuked. Anyway, travel with me back to 1965. I was 18 years old. 
and my father had back some years earlier, 1957 or 1958, had taken me to my first riot in Enniskillen in County Fermanagh. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the first time I'd seen violence up close and personal. And uh, <coughs> it was a civil rights march. It was we were marching for the right to housing and jobs and votes. We didn't have votes if you were Catholic in the North in those days. And uh, it was a baton charge. Uh, by the RUC and uh, the B Specials, and the British Territorial Army joined in. And um, we sought shelter um, in a pub doorway. And uh, I was a very small boy, not that I'm much bigger now, <laughs> even at 70. But uh, I was clinging onto the tail of my father's gabardine coat, and I was looking for reassurance, and I looked up into his face for reassurance. And at that young age, I saw defeat in his eyes. And no small child needs to see defeat in their father's eyes. Some years later, 1965, he was ill, and I wrote this for him. Um, working as a young journalist in 
Dublin. And uh, I had a very good shorthand note, which I could write about 120 words a minute. But unfortunately that meant I ended up doing an awful lot of dull coverage. And um, I remember I'd be sitting on the Dáil Press Gallery writing down what all these politicians were saying. And every time they'd come to a cliché, I would sort of just make a mark. I'd, and you had soft, soft, short forms. Straight line meant, I'm very glad you asked me that. And uh, a hook meant uh, at this point in time. And I wondered, was it possible to write a song using... Were well, there enough cliches that politicians used? <coughs> and I started to gather together a collection of them. And I discovered that there were too damn many to put in one song. <laughs> so this song is called The Politician Song, and it's about politicians. <laughs> That's the first cliche. <laughs> well, for twenty frantic, fruitless years, I worked in Dublin town, reporting for newspapers. I was busy writing down all the words of politicians in the endless quest for truth. It was at such a wasted exercise I squandered all me youth. That's the cause of my misfortune, as I'll explain to you. For I find myself now talking like politicians do. So if somebody should ask me, do I take sugar in me tea? I grasp them warmly by the hand, and this is what I say. Well, I'm very glad you asked me that, for at this point in time, in the circumstances that prevail, there isn't a pipeline. Infrastructural implications interfaced with lines of thought which lead to grassroots viabilities. But at this point, I'd rather not enunciate in ambiguities, but rather seek to find negotiated compromises, which are the bottom line for full and frank discussions which could serve to integrate with basic fundamental principles to which we all relate. Not in doctrine or philosophy, which any fool can see in inescapable hypotheses confronting you and me. But in the interests of the common good, now you need never fear. For I have the matter well in hand, and I'm glad I made things clear. <laughs> now, that's the chorus, and I expect you all to join me. <laughs> Well, as you can imagine, this has greatly changed my life. An example was the fateful day on which I wed my wife. All went well until the moment the priest asked me with a smile, Do you take this woman for your wife? And swiftly I replied, Well, I'm very glad you asked me that for at this point in time. In the circumstances that prevail, there isn't a pipeline. Infrastructural implications interfaced with lines of thought which lead to grassroots viabilities. But at this point, I'd rather not negotiate in ambiguities, but rather seek to find negotiated compromises, which are the bottom line for full and frank discussions which could serve to integrate with basic fundamental principles to which we all relate. Not in doctrine or philosophy, which any fool can see in inescapable hypotheses confronting you and me. But in the interests of the common good, now you need never fear. For I have the matter well in hand, and I'm glad I made things clear. I didn't hear you joining in, lads. I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Now I'm lying on my deathbed and I'm filled with mortal dread For I know that very shortly I will certainly be dead And when St. Peter asks me Do I want to come on in? I'm sure to face damnation For I know I'll say to him Well, I'm very glad you asked me that And you know the rest yourselves <laughs> Yeah.
Thank you very much. My brother Cormac is a very good songwriter. And uh, we have written some stuff together. This is largely his. In fact, he's too good, I hate the bastard. <laughs> Yeah. 
This is a true story except for the first line. I lied in the first line of the song. It's all about shopping. And there's a man down here asked me to sing it. I claim in the first line that the wife, she broke her ankle when she tumbled off the bike. That is a lie. The wife suffered a bad sprain. She's over there. She's, I, I guess the only damage I ever inflicted on my wife. Uh, physical damage, anyway. Anyway, she damaged her ankle. We brought her up to the hospital. They x-rayed it. And they came out and announced that she had torn ligaments and associated soft tissue damage. And I'm fucked if I could find anything to rhyme with that. <laughs> Says I to myself, says I, tis broke. <laughs> My wife can be a very difficult woman. She might know. She might know, yeah. Well, the wife, she broke her ankle when she tumbled off the bike. Leaving me to do the housework, a job I never liked. And doing the weekly shopping seemed a dreadful chore to me. Till I discovered little dee aldi, little dee aldi, little dee dee. Now I just can't wait for Thursdays when the specials go on view. I'm the first man to the trolleys. I'm the first man in the queue. For now I know what women mean about retail therapy. It's little dee aldi, little dee aldi, little dee aldi, little dee dee. It's angle grinders and black puddings and a pot of German jam, a lump of hairy bacon and a wetsuit from Japan, a pack of streaky rashers and a crate of Russian stout, and a portable generator just, just in, in case, case the lights go It's all eye wheels and windscreen wipers and a bag of rooster spuds. 
An inflatable rubber dinghy to help survive the floods. Spanners, sockets and fish fingers. They're so cheap, they're damn near free. In little de aldi, little de aldi, little de aldi, little de aldi. There's welding rods and prime organic beef to make a hearty stew. A hiking staff and wee spiky boots were climbing Catman do. Big heads of curly cabbage to make it eat your fill. Sledgehammers and bananas and a lovely cordless thrill. And there's hatchets and hamburgers and there's tins of beans and peas. And a petal driven chainsaw for cutting bits off trees. Strimmers, sabre saws and sausages. Computers and TVs in little the Aldi, little the Aldi, little the Aldi, little the <laughs> Now the wife has gone ballistic, marriage heading for the rocks. With her crutches and her shopping bags, sure she's hobbling round the shops and she's cut up all me credit cards. I'm sad as sad can be. No more Aldi, little the Aldi, no more little the D for me. For the shed is full of plastic shit I didn't really want. <laughs> and the garden's full of furniture and the house is full of plants. And I'm living in the doghouse, Rover, Fido, Shep and me. Because of Aldi, little dee, Aldi, little dee, Aldi, little dee, dee. So no more angle grinders nor black puddings, no more pots of German jam, no lumps of hairy bacon, no more wetsuits from Japan, no packs of streaky rashers, and I'll have to do without another portable generator just in case the lights go out. No ally wheels, no windscreen wipers, no bag of rooster spuds, no inflatable rubber dinghies to help survive the floods. For I'm living in the doghouse, I'm as sad as sad can be. No more Aldi, little the Aldi, no more little the D for me. Thank you, Billy Keane. Lighting effects, <laughs> courtesy of Billy. We're going to take a break now for a few minutes to allow Billy to sell a bit of drink and indulge in vulgar commerce. So we'll be back with you shortly and we'll do it a little bit. Okay, God bless you. Thanks. Uh, you're welcome back to the second part of the Mickey McConnell 70th concert. And uh, if it's as Michal Amor Hoktik said, said, the first half was great and the second half was even better, or words to that effect. But uh, no, the first half was incredible. Mickey's going to sing some more of his own songs, probably five or six, and uh, or whatever is in his head, because he has the freedom of this pub. This is where he uh, this is his home place, along with Mac Munns and Belly Bunyan. And uh, we're so thrilled to have him here. So um, if you just maybe switch off the phones for a few minutes and put them on silent and listen to the words and the music of Ireland's greatest songwriter, uh, Mickey McConnell. Thank you. When I come in here tonight, um, I was asked by Kate Fitzpatrick, who is sitting down here. Give a welcome to Kate. She's on the way from Moville, very, very talented writer, author, who is down here on a bursary and is writing another one of her absolutely wonderful books. Give her a round of applause. But Kate asked me when I came in, had I written anything to... Uh, mark my 70th birthday and I told her I had and uh, it's this do you know everyone that grows up in a family um, uh, with brothers and sisters you think back on those days when the sun always seemed to shine and it never seemed to rain and I was one, I was the youngest of the litter of uh, four brothers and one sister. Uh, so this is a song about growing up in the banks of Loch Erin. With 
my Gypsy Band Brothers. Because another birthday's come and gone And there won't be many more My mind's gone wandering back the years That paved my lifetime's road To those endless sun-drenched boyhood days In the place it all began with my gypsy band of brothers by the lovely river. Now I don't wear those tinted glasses, so I swear that this is true. The sun had always seemed to shine, the skies were always blue. And the Dorseys, the McGuire's and the Gurneys, and my gypsy band of brothers by the lovely river. The whole lifetime lies between us since the day I went away, while the salmon keeps returning. Part of me remained lost in endless sun drenched boyhood days in the place it all began with my gypsy band of brothers by the lovely river. Now my mother taught the primary school. My father ran the shop. It was a home of love and laughter where the music never stopped. And when evening stars came twinkling out, all the neighbors would arrive and their music and their folklore kept our heritage alive. We snared rabbits in the crockery, captured tadpoles in the bog, and went roaming round the foreshore with fishing lines and dogs. And the black and dangerous days to come were but lessons yet to learn by my gypsy band. <laughs> Brothers by the lovely river. Now, our one and only sister was the first of us to go from a cruel and evil sickness that was terrible and slow. And it was standing by her deathbed that I first learned how to pray when I begged the God of mercy to allow her slip away. My brother Sean too soon would follow long, long before his time. We thought he'd be the last man standing be the very last in line. He left without one word of warning as the leaves began to fall. The kindest and the bravest and the best one of us all. Though a lifetime lies between us since the day I went away, I'll 
the salmon keeps returning A part of me remains Lost in endless sun-drenched boyhood days Where first I grew a man With my gypsy band of brothers By the lovely river now there are three surviving brothers left who are here to carry on Mary's treasury of poetry, Sandy's legacy of song, and the war lives have led us separate ways, and we've travelled near and far. That shared patchwork of our boyhood is what made us who we are and I don't want to go to heaven for I've been already there and an eternity of piety is more than I could bear but if God might show me mercy, he'll allow me to return to join my gypsy band of brothers by the lovely river. Yes, if God might grant me mercy, he'll allow me to return to join my gypsy band of brothers and my beloved river No matter what hour of the day or night you go to a pub in Ireland at half ten in the morning, you'll find an ugly, drunken little man, something like myself, <laughs> clinging on to the end of the concert, moldy drunk. And somebody will say, for God's sake, don't mind him. He was left to farm the land by the uncle and he drank. <laughs> Which, of course, meant I had to embark on uh, an intellectual and physical exercise about what are the mechanics of drinking a farm of land. <laughs> Took me some years <laughs> some years and a lot of bad company. I enlisted the help of a few people who are not that terrible far away from where I am sitting right at this moment. People who are not necessarily from Kerry but slightly further up the west coast. Who still has the farm looking Who still has the farm? Well, my uncle, Peter, rolled his eyes and gave out a mighty roar. He grabbed his chest, he gasped for breath, and he fell dead on the floor. Then later, when the will was read, the family was alarmed, for Uncle Peter left to me his house and farm land. Now, I was never into farming much to the soil I don't belong. I much prefer the public house with the women, wine and song. That's why the neighbours point at me and say behind their hands, She yonder goes mad Mickey, he's your man who drank the farm. <laughs> and first I drank the bottom field and then I drank the bog. Forty little black-faced yews and shat the collie dog. The cattle in the byers and the bonovs and the sow. Now I've finished with the harrow and I'm starting on the plow. <laughs> Now Hector was the banty cock and he was the first to go For long before the break of dawn he'd stick up his beak and crow 
A neighbour woman up the road admired him in the yard, and two pound fifty later on Bull Hector got his cards. <laughs> then the hens got agitated after Hector went away, and their beady eyes suggested their suspicions of foul play. I looked up the yellow pages. A pheasant plucker said he'd buy. That night in John B. King, me boys, we made the feathers fly. <laughs> Then a few old friends invited me to a soccer match in Spain. So a load of bullocks later and I climbed aboard the plane. <laughs> but I must have took the long way home for I wakened up in Greece. But I found that bed and breakfast cost me cutlets, chops and fleece. Mind you, sheep are awful awkward yokes for when they choose to graze. They insist on climbing to the top of mountains, hills and braes. When I heard that the old Ireland flower was being held in Ballina, without the slightest hesitation, I flogged the flock to form the flower. <laughs> now, now the bank is getting nasty and they say they'll take no more. And I've started pinning statements with sharp daggers to the door. They say when they come round again, they'll bring the bailiffs in. So it looks as if I'm facing ruination once again. Ruination once again. Ruination once again. Without another load of bullocks, it's ruination. Things are getting desperate, for there's nothing left to sell. But to my joy, I hear that Uncle Pat is quite unwell. I think I'll call to see him with strong drink to ease his pain. And if Lady Luck smiles down on me, I'm in business once again. And first I'll drink his bottom field, and then I'll drink his bog. His forty little black faced yews and his little hairy dog, the cattle in the byre and the bonnets and the sow. For I will and I must get plastered, for the humour is on the low. A total change of mood. Um, Paddy Regan, my great friend here, Paddy's asked me to sing this song, and uh, there's a bit of a history to the song. It's uh, when I went to Dublin first, uh, I was taken onto the wing by a, a veteran reporter. He was much older than I. And he was very good to me. He taught me hot pubs opened very, very early in the morning. <laughs> he taught me how to fiddle my expenses. He taught me the, the wonderful word when you're writing expenses, and I'll pass this on to you for free. Reciprocal hospitality. <laughs> Reciprocal hospitality covers a multitude. I won't dwell on it, but you can think about it. And um, if ever you're doing expenses, let those words ring in your mind. But um, to make a long story short as reasonable, he, he got Alzheimer's disease and he ended up in a nursing home in Dublin. And I used to go out to see him occasionally and for a while he knew who I was. And then after a while he didn't. And uh, sometimes I'd go to see him and my visits would coincide with when his wife was going to see him. And he used to be a musician, we used to play a bit of music together. Um, he wasn't particularly good, but he loved it. And after he died, I thought he deserved a song. And I thought I would write it in his voice. So it's a song from the point of view of somebody who is suffering from that most appalling gutter snipe of a disease. And if there's any of you here who are caring for people, you have my 
I'm bound to that race. Down in the caverns, measureless to man, beside the sunless sea. In the legions of the lost and found, it's there I'd likely be. Won't you tell the gentle lady, with the tragic haunted eyes, I'll see her in the garden room if she'll promise not to cry. And my guardian angel wakes me up with a morning cup of tea. The angel's name is Mary, or maybe it's Marie. Or maybe, wait a minute, oh, what am I trying to say? You know, my mind seems to be rambling quite a lot these last few days. But the gentle lady visits me at least three hours a day And she seems so lost and lonely it's only kind to let her stay And because she seems bewildered and so badly needs a friend I just sort of play along with her as we sit there and pretend and to light the lanterns in her eyes And keep at bay the tears We pretend that we were married The best part of the fifty years And we pretend that I built a house for her On a hill above the sea Where we'd sit outside at sunset For some the kids and me and oh, we pretend that I was clever, we pretend that I was strong, and though I made a lot of money, I still knew right from wrong. But sometimes glancing in her eyes, as we play her foolish game, I catch echoes of a time and place, of something I can't blame. There was a man at her Christmas party He played the violin And my fingers started trembling You know it was the strangest thing For there was something in his music That swept me far away To a far off distant time and place In another world and day was it somewhere that I used to go Before it slipped away That warm spider web of safe old friends Who drink and sing and play And the ghostly faces flame and burn And flicker in me head Till the guardian angel breaks the spell When she says it's time for bed I've got some important things to do What they are I can't recall But I think I'd like to be alone If you don't mind at all For when I weep From not remembering No matter how I try I just sit out in the garden room And watch the clouds go by down in the caverns, measureless to man, beside the sunless sea, in the legions of the walking dead, it's there I'd like to be. Won't you tell the gentle lady, with the tragic haunted eyes, 
I'll meet her in the garden room We'll watch the clouds go by asking where do the songs come from and um, they come from everywhere basically but there's, there's one rule of thumb that I've always adopted if you take from one person and take one person's ideas and one person's music it's theft it's stealing if you take from half a dozen people it's research <laughs> Most of my songs are extremely well researched, <laughs> except for this one. This is sheer naked <coughs> theft. <laughs> I'm only singing it because my daughter Carrie over here asked me to sing it. And um, I suppose if you're going to steal from somebody it's only half days to say who you stole it from. And it's stolen from the great Sigerson Clifford uh, who wrote this wonderful, wonderful poem which I took, distorted, maimed and used my own purposes, not caring if one penny of royalties went to the Sigerson clan or estate or whatever, I had no, and I will deny to my dying day that I had any hand act or part in the stealing of the song. But I'm admitting it to you. We'd be confiscating the video. <laughs> And actually, this it written on my honeymoon. You would think I would have a better thing to do with that. <laughs> <time. laughs> but I don't. I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> When I say it was written on my honeymoon, it arose out of a conversation we were driving, myself and my lovely wife, Maura. <laughs> okay, let me rephrase that. Myself, it was written when myself and my present wife were driving over to Castle Island and we're going through Larrick and Pawn. And uh, she said to me, I bet you couldn't write a song with Lara Campan in it. And I thought the name was wonderful, beautiful. So um, we put a bet on it. A pint of Guinness as against a uh, Bacardian Coke, I think it was work. I won the bet. <laughs> uh, with apologies to Sigerson Clifford, and if there's any relatives in here, you can go and whistle for the royalties. <laughs> All the wee birds were lining the bleak autumn branches, prepared for the 
burden to fly to a far sunny shore when the tinkers made camp at the bend in the river coming back from the horse fed in Ballin's now the harvest been over the farmer came walking all along the failure river that bordered his land and twas there he first saw her twixt firelight and water the tinker man's daughter Next morning he rose from a night without her resting. He went straight to her father and made his case known. In a pub in Listowel, the they worked out the bargain for the tinker, a pony for the daughter. Where the trees peg their shadows along the Thaler River The tinker and the farmer inspected the land And the whole white gilding pony was the price they'd agreed on For the tinker man's daughter The wedding soon over, the tinkers departed. They were eager to travel on south down the road. But the crunch of the iron shod wheels on the gravel was as bitter to her as the way she'd been sold. Yet she tried hard to please him, she did all his bidding. She slept in his bed and she worked on his land. But the walls of that cabin pressed tighter than tighter on the tinker man's daughter. And as white as the hands of the priest or the hangman, the snow spread its blanket the next Christmas round. When the tinker man's daughter slipped out from the bedside, turned her back on the land and her face to the town. It was said someone saw her that same evening she was making her way out of her life and that was the last time the settled folk saw her the tinker man's daughter Where the North Kerry hills cut the failure the stone In a farm on its banks lives a bitter old man And he swears by the shotgun he keeps at his bedside That he'll kill any tinker who camps on his land but whenever he hears iron shot wheels crunch on gravel or a horse in the shafts of a bright caravan, then his day's work's tormented, his night's sleep demented by the tinker man's daughter.
danza de los He caught my rope And with eyes sun crinkled He looked first at my boat and then at me And he told me Son, I fished these waters For eighty years or more, both man and boy I was brave, but you're much older to dare to go to sea in that rich man's toy because of that boat you stake your life on. It's fiberglass and plastic stem to stern, it bears the beaten soul of its factory builder for it's never known the love of a craftsman's hand but old wooden boats scold like old mothers when you drive them through a west of Ireland sea old wooden boats are like no other for the fight for the lives of fools like you and me. He said old oak planks will groan and whimper. And they'll warn you when it's time to be afraid. While a plastic hull will crack and splinter. And with no warning, Sweep you to an early grave And when the northern star Leans on your shoulder And its icy anger builds a troubled sea Then put your faith In God Almighty And in the secrets that the winds once told the trees For old wooden boats Scold like old mothers When you drive them through a west of Ireland sea Old wooden boats are like no water For the fight for the lives of fools like you and me The blaskets fall stern, and the wind recalled the old man's warning. It asked me, had I listened? Had I learned? Old oh, wooden boats scold like old mothers when you drive them through a west of Ireland sea. Old wooden boats are like no other For the fight for the lives of fools like you and me
Uncle Johnny lived adjacent to Kilcock. Honey, Maddy, Dante, Winnie, he was henpecked round the clock. And she sent them out for bread one day, all in the pissing rain. <laughs> She got a loaf in the post from Liverpool and never heard from him again. <laughs> I'm coming to the end of the evening. Oh, oh. And listen, I'd just like to, I'd like to say thanks for being such a lovely, wonderful audience tonight and for listening so attentively to all these terrible, big, long-winded, boring songs. Give yourselves a round of applause. You're great. So I'm going to leave you with this one, which is a way of going right back to the start. Oh, yeah. um. Well, I'm the last of the protest singers. I'm the last of the gallant band. Over 50 years ago, turned our guitar. Because we call for peace and justice yeah. And demanded an end to war yeah. We ourselves out of business There's no good wars left anymore Well, it was easy in the 60s yeah. When I was barely grown And I cut me teeth on the crappy boy And Sean South from Wine like Dylan and moon like Leonard Cohn in dingy folk club basements, mouldy, drunk, and totally stone. And after seeing Easy Rider, I bought myself a PSA and did wheelies round the Fermanagh roads in the almost alarming way. Recreational pharmaceuticals and motorbikes don't mit. And I seem to find me most of me time crawling out of a roadside ditch. But when free loving came along, man, it was cool to be alive. Yeah, when free loving came along, man, it was cool to be alive. For I only put on me trousers twice in 1965. <laughs> for I met Sutter. <laughs> for I met with a Yankee beauty as a legend. John Lennon glasses and dressed in army surplus clothes fell victim to me passions dreadful songs and deathly prose but with my Japanese guitar I struck the proper note with me beard long hair and sandals bandy legs and an Afghan coat so 
for years I hauled and gnashed me teeth and vented all me spleen about things I thought had happened in lands I'd never seen. And it didn't really matter that I knew bugger all, for there was always the chance of the atom bomb sailing over the Berlin Wall. But now there's a gap in East Berlin where the wall it used to be. And the mealy mouth South Africans have set Nelson Mandela free. And it's like being on the Titanic, and she's barely just afloat. When there's no more Thatcher left to hit, and the black man's got the vote. I'm the last of the gathered band who over 50 years ago took our guitars in hand. But when I look back on me life, I his triumphs, joys and fears, you know I've come to the conclusion I'm still crazy after all of these years. wonderful singers and rather than me doing an encore there are five or six people here who are going to entertain you for the rest of the night. I'm doing fresh smoke. Thank you all very much. Uh, folks that was the one and only Mickey McConnell. I think anyone who came here what a nice, thank you Mickey, um, you're a genius, a legend, and mad for fags and drink. And a wonderful lover in 65, what happened to him since, Mara? I don't know. Anyway, thanks Mickey, oh there he is, there he is, thanks. And thanks to everyone in the audience, it's great to get such incredible attention for two and a half hours, but the songs demanded uh, the respect and you certainly gave it. Thanks so much to everyone, well done. Thanks Mickey.